This is poetry. Here we go. So this is uh, my first poem, and it's called It's Hard to Be a Bard. All right? I thought I was a poet, but you'd hardly ever know it, for instead of waxing lyrical, I'm blatantly satirical. It's often short of miracle. I very rarely show it. I think Shakespeare and Dickens write the stuff what really sickens because I know I never had their class. It's all that I could do to pass through level English in my class, and it's because of that this last line won't rhyme. Well, when, um, when you start writing poetry, if you decide to write poetry, it becomes rather um, compulsive, rather addictive. This is a poem called Compulsion. Here we go. You ready for this? I did this once at Greenbelt um, on a huge stage in front of, I think it was about 24,000 people. And I was more worried about the people that were watching on the side of the stage because they were actually real poets, <laughs> not like me. But here we go. No. Got to write a poem, can't remember who it's for, but if I don't write it, they won't love me anymore. Got to write a poem, I got to write it quick, never mind the way it rhymes or the way it scans on the line. Got to write a poem, and I got to write it soon. They've given me from now until the end of September. <laughs> got to write a poem, got to write a poem, got to write a poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud amongst the forest glades and jungles, and all at once I came upon a host of golden daffodungles. Got to write a poem. Can't remember who it's for, but I'll soon find out when they come knocking at my door. Yes, I'll find out soon enough when they come knocking at my door. I was going to do some religious poems for you. I don't, I don't like religion. I'd rather have a relationship, wouldn't you? Uh, but um, I, I'm, I'll take a book up here. and I, this, is, this is called Sacred. Um, what's, the, what's the similarity between a, an election manifesto and a poetry book? The similarity is no one's buying either. But if you want to book the trend tonight, you can actually go over to the back over there and buy some books because every time you buy a book from the back over there, it will benefit Cross Rhythms as a proportion going to that cause tonight. And that's what we're celebrating, isn't it? So I've got a few poems from ancient times, 70s, when I first came to faith. This is the first one. This is called Low Voltage Prayer. I... Talk to you. You talk to me. We talk to each other. How come sometimes you can't hear me because my line is so bad and I can't hear you because my actions speak louder than your words? Hands up, all who love me. Put your hands in the air like you really do care. Hands up, keep them there if you are willing to pay for all my wrongdoing. Hold them there and keep them there for about 2,000 years. Here's a poem about religion. This is about that church that you know where everyone goes along, but they do it for a social thing. They don't actually love God. They do it because they want to show off their new suits. This is called Stained Glass Avatar. Oh, please, dear Heavenly Father, will you listen to our prayers? Bless this place we call our church and send us a millionaire. The roof is leaking and the bells in the clock tower need replacing. It's going to cost a lot more cash to replace the cash we're wasting. Oh, please, dear Lord, forbid that we should ever wish to stray from off the traditional church path into the evangelical way. And heaven forbid that children ever should join our congregation. They're noisy and disruptive and they ruin our concentration. Make us grateful for quiet liturgy and the cold, hard pews we sit on. 
the musty common prayer books and the sheets the collect is writ on. Dear Lord, accept our praises as we mumble in our hymnals. We may not express much passion, but our suits are status symbols. Dear Lord, forbid that we should ever lose sight of who you are, the baby in the nativity scene and the stained glass avatar. Help us, Lord, to build a church where people love to flock as they visit our museum, a hearse made out of rock. Talking about hearses, uh, have you ever been hitchhiking? Have you ever been hitchhiking? Um, I, was, I was hitchhiking once and um, a hearse pulled up. And uh, Blue looked at me and I said, uh, no thank you. I'm not going that far. <laughs> but um, this is actually a poem called, I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. And... Uh, it's, um, the interesting thing about this is that it actually, you get your inspiration from poetry from everywhere. And um, the thing is, uh, I just find this actually in here because I need to read it out rather than quote it because um, I haven't learned it, although I wrote it. Um, the thing is, um, I, was, I was reading this psychiatric report and in it, it was an, an, an analysis of all the nightmares that people had had during the pandemic. And I lifted a lot of these words out from that. So here we go. This is, I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. If I'm still breathing, then someone else must be dead. I'm ha haunted by the nightmares that are swirling in my head. I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. My mind is being squeezed like toothpaste into overload. I'm dreaming of tsunamis while a hurricane rains down toads. Jellyfish glow on the sides of the gelatine roads. My mind is being squeezed like toothpaste into overload. The medical staff were marching, staring straight ahead. Their white coats gleaming as their shoes trailed crimson red. And there I was wondering if it was something I'd said. The medical staff were marching, staring straight ahead. I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. A regiment of androids tried to climb into my bed. My sanity is gone and all my common sense has fled. I ordered an Uber and a hearse showed up instead. I've got just a few more to read for you. This is a book um, called Ascent and it's all about love essentially. And um, for all you married ones out there, this is um, a poem for you. This is called Fight Club. You took the wind out of my sails. You stole my thunder, removed my bales. You pulled the rug from beneath my feet and I was heading for defeat. You saw the chance and you moved right in. I caught your uppercut on my chin. The canvas floor rose fast to meet, and I'll admit you had me beat. But then I spied your Achilles heel, and the other weak spots you conceal. I used them in my counterattack, and I quickly had you on your back. Hostilities over. The truce was signed, and soon our lives were realigned. Best of friends now, two of a kind. You in your neck brace, and I in mine. I'll just read um, one or two more. Um, this is <laughs> it's another one called Jilted Blues. Can you imagine someone being jilted? Uh, here we go. If you're looking for your heart, it's in the refrigerator. It's been there about half the year, a cold heart of a traitor. Your mind is in the airing cupboard where it's drying, have no doubt. I put it on quick wash cycle to clean all the poison out. I suppose you want your honor. Well, I'm sorry to declare you'll find it nowhere in this house. It was ruined beyond repair. And as for your integrity, don't even stop to search. You lost it several months ago when you left me at the church. <laughs> well, I think I've used up all my time now, so I'm, I'm going to read one more. I'll actually quote one more for you. Perform it for you. This is one that I wrote... At Easter time, 
And uh, I wrote it especially to perform in the church that I go to. And um, it's quite a close one to my heart because it just came to me in a dream one night. As I was waking up, I wrote it all down. And um, it goes like this. It's, about, it's called The Second Adam, actually. There was a good reason Christ died on a tree. You see, in the beginning, we stole from the tree. God put back on the tree what was taken by me. Everything that was taken, he restored it for free. His hands were pierced because my hands took the fruit. His feet were pierced because I stood there to loot. His side was pierced because Eve came from a rib. And thus he atoned for the wrong that she did. You see, Eve was the first to fall into temptation. So the second Adam made a complete restoration. He wore a crown of thorns because thorns were a consequence of the damage we did with our first disobedience. He paid the full price of our fall in the garden when he sealed our redemption with his ultimate pardon. On his own head, he carried the ultimate curse so that all our wrongdoings he could fully reverse. There was a good reason Christ died on a tree. Because in the beginning, we stole from the tree. God put back on the tree what was taken from me. So he paid for my eternity. Thank you very much.